Hello, I'm Sheila with The Grateful Goddess, and if you've been following The Grateful Goddess for any time, you know that I interview different people who are living their passion, living in total joy, happiness, and uh, living the best life. I wanted to introduce you to Ted Tread, uh, who is absolutely living his dream, and um, tell us exactly what your life looks like. What do you do? As little as possible is really what I like to do. Exactly! <laughs> exactly! Uh, you know, I, about uh, five years ago, um, my brother passed away from cancer at 47. And I just had a look at that situation. I thought, oh, that could be me. And I've, I've had a really good life up to that point, but I really honed it down to a few things. And it's like, I like to travel. I like to ride my bike. I like to hike and adventure and hang out with people that I love. And so I've uh, designed my life so that I can do that as much as possible. Right. It's defining your values, mm -hmm. what you love the most, mm -hmm. and making sure that your life reflects what you value in life. Yeah, because I think so many people get caught up in what they think they should do or what other people think they should do. And so they follow that path under the illusion that, hey, I'm doing pretty good, mm -hmm. but, you know, then things fall apart at some point and it... I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me. Why would you not want to live your life and have as much joy and as fun as possible? Like, yeah. it doesn't compute. Yeah. So even though you've had a um, more traditional job in the broadcast um, field, yeah. but Mama Shred was definitely an inspiration in keeping you doing whatever it is that inspired you. Absolutely. You know, um, I come from a family of six kids and I can say that mom is the only one that's always when I've come up with a crazy idea um, she's always said that's great and uh, I've really seen in the last few months that I think that unconditional support team is not optional if you want to really find out what you can be and if you look at anybody in that's done anything anywhere has had support people and my philosophy is that uh, if I'm going to do something I'm going to only surround myself with people that love and support me and I'm ruthless with it. I just don't see the value in having to explain myself, having to justify myself. I just want to tell you something and I want to hear, that's great, how can I help you <laughs> achieve that? Much better that way and if you're going to do that you have to be prepared to play that role unconditionally to anybody that needs your help and wants your help. And if you uh, come from that place, you will always find people that want to help you because that's all you do, right? So And you are attracting what you are putting out, so mm -hmm. it's coming back to you because I would say that you're in the business of inspiring others to inspire others, correct? Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. it's like... I think that we, you know, the more I think about this, I, I hear this term, um, to serve. You know, you hear it in church and New Agey stuff that you're supposed to serve people. And I don't think that's the right word because serve sounds like slavery or, you know, like demeaning in some context. And it's just be kind. That's all you are doing when you serve mm -hmm. people is you're just being kind and thoughtful and addressing how to make their life better. And if you come from a place of kindness, not because you're going to get to heaven or you're going to get 72 virgins, I mean, that sounds like a great deal, um, but that it really has to come from a place of, this is who I am, I help people, that's what I do. Writing a book to tell others <laughs> how. <laughs> um, yes, I am writing a book. Uh, it's Wow, it's been a three-year project, and I've written a couple other books, and they were usually about a year, and I keep finding um, little tidbits that I want to keep adding, and you only get that through life experiences, and you know, that we all excel um, when we help each other, and so the, the book, uh, Smart Ass Buddha, um, really lays out like it's great if you're happy and inspired 
But if your family isn't, or your friends aren't, or your neighbors aren't, you're never going to get as high as you can go. And it's in your own best interest mm -hmm. to help people. Because if everybody around you is cr cranky, well, then... It rubs off. It rubs off. And when they're all happy and having fun, and, you know, I, I just uh, was down... I wrote the book while I was in Guatemala, and I just went back to get a few more pictures and uh, visit with some of my... My and friends, and it's so spiritually moving to be surrounded by giggly, happy people mm -hmm. all the time. Not just like an occurrence that happens at a party or something, but I mean all the time. So when you wake up, they're like, hey, good morning, and, you know, how's your afternoon? And, and wow, I just dropped a, a whole case of dishes. It's like, <laughs> what are you, what are you going to do, you know? <laughs> and so... Um, you know, I think the other part... And what do you well, attri when, attribute that to? I mean, do you think that they, for whatever reason, are under less stress than we are here? Um, I don't know. You know, a lot of them are making 70 cents an hour. They don't... Like, when you go into their homes, there's a bed, and there might be a chair, mm -hmm. and there might be a table. So they're not really trying to gain material wealth. But I think it's, I think it's a generational thing where... You know, their parents are giggly, and grandma's giggly, and everybody's giggly. And I, you know, I, I think if I knew the answer, I would be, you know, I would sell a zillion books. Right. And, and really, I think this journey is totally your own. And you have to figure it out for yourself, because mm -hmm. what works for me may not necessarily work for you. And the name, the smart-ass Buddha, comes from that we all have wisdom as far as the smart part, I think we all have wisdom to offer each other and that it's all there for the taking. You just got to pay attention because, you know, the street cleaner may not be the most financially successful, but he's happy all the time. It's like, well, you can learn from him or, you know, from whoever. And the ass part is that we can all be jackasses <laughs> at time. And even the most amazing people on the planet, whether they're Lance Armstrong or the Dalai Lama or whoever it is, we're all human and that we don't have to be perfect. And then the Buddha part is that um, uh, that uh, we all have potential for enlightenment. So we all have the potential to teach and learn from each other and help each other and screw up and so what? You know, so what? Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Shred. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I almost helped you. <laughs>